Susan Tehrani is our correspondent in New York. Susan Tehrani, listening to what Kafiri is saying about policies, that these policies need to change, uh, what do you make of it? One of the issues with the Biden administration has been that it's been walking on eggshells when it comes to the crisis in the Middle East. And you can argue with other crises, international crises, uh, starting with the Afghan withdrawal and then Russia. And then now here we are. And when there isn't deterrence on the part of the United States and when it, there isn't that kind of leadership uh, that has conviction, then in lieu of that, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel uh, decides to uh, go full force and takes matters into his own hands. And then you have on top of that, this sort of talk of some kind of ceasefire that was very murky. It was not clear. It was put forth by President Biden and France, uh, President Macron. And, you know, when you look and read that uh, ceasefire deal or the proposal, at least, it, you know, it was very vague. It talked about the government in Lebanon. It didn't mention Hezbollah by name. So until and unless there is leadership and conviction on the part of the United States, then, uh, you know, this this is the situation that we're going to have right now. And it's unfortunate that President Biden is a lame duck president uh, because it makes things a lot more difficult. Uh, there is less at stake. And, uh, you know, we'll have to see what President Trump or Vice President Kamala Harris come November will decide to do. But one thing is for certain, even though if there is no conviction, for example, here and there was in other administrations, America's support for Israel is unwavering, as we just saw in the last few hours. Mm -hmm. So that's not going to change. How this support is going to translate into some kind of resolution or peace for the Middle East, well, that's the million dollar question. Susan Tehran is our correspondent in New York. Susan, stay with me. We are receiving updates at this moment in our newsroom. Uh, and reactions are coming in from the United States. Democratic congressman, uh, that is Democratic congressman, thre has threatened Iran after Israel attack. He says nuclear facilities now fair game. Jared Moskowitz posted this statement on social media where he says that uh, nuclear facilities are now a fair game. He's actually warning Iran of the consequences of the U.S. or the U.S. what consequences the U.S. will take following their rocket and missiles, missiles attack uh, on Israel. Giorgio Cafiero is the CEO of Gulf State Analytics and Professor Georgetown University. Cafiero, thank you very much for staying with us. We hear from some geopolitical analysts who say that an escalation could lead to tremendous destruction in the region. Could you paint that for us? Tremendous destruction in West Asia. How will that look like? Well, since October 7th of 2023, we've seen that the war in Gaza has been very contagious. It's expanded into other countries and territories, southern Lebanon, the West Bank, Yemen, Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, Syria. And it is very easy to imagine how further intensification of the ongoing conflicts could further regionalize and further internationalize. Um, I look at the, the Gulf subregion and I know that policymakers in the GCC countries are absolutely terrified about the possibility of this chaotic turmoil spilling into the Gulf. Obviously, the Gulf is so important to the global economy. The stakes are high for basically every single country in the whole world. There's also the same time potential for these conflict dynamics to spill into Africa, spill into parts of Europe, potentially Cyprus, Western Balkans. How could so that happen? How the, could that, uh, I'm sorry, how could that um, uh, spill over to regions like Africa, for example, and uh, the states that you're mentioning in Europe? 
Sure. Well, obviously, Egypt is uh, on the African continent, and the Egyptians have um, a lot at stake in terms of the security landscape in the Red Sea. And we need to consider all of the security risks to Africa, and by extension, also countries in the Horn of Africa that are linked to the Arabian Peninsula, specifically Yemen, in so many different ways. Also, in the Western Balkans, we don't necessarily talk about this a whole lot, but it's a part of Europe where there is a lot of corruption, a lot of organized crime, many porous borders, a lot of illegal trade. But also there's really an Israeli presence in some of the countries in the Western Balkans. And also Iran has its own influence in this part of southeastern Europe, too. And we certainly have to consider the potential for the conflict dynamics in the Middle East to spill into the, the Western Balkans, sometimes referred to as the Western flank of the Middle East. Uh, so far, that hasn't really happened. But, you know, we're only about one year out after October 7th. I don't think the region will stabilize anytime soon. So we always have to consider these types of security risks mm -hmm. in the upcoming period. Mr. Cafiero is the CEO of Gulf State Analytics and Professor Georgetown University. Mr. Cafiero, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for talking to us today and for all your insights on We On World Is One. Good to be with you. Thank you. If you're just joining us, this is the latest updates from um, Israel. Lebanon uh, Transport Minister Ali Hamie has said that the country was closing its airspace for two hours, at least on Tuesday. Uh, Germany has demanded that Iran end its missile attack on Israel, expressing fears that the escalation in the fighting could fuel further conflict. In a statement by the Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock, it said, I condemn the ongoing attack in the strongest possible terms. Israel has vowed to retaliate following the Iranian missile attack on Tuesday, with army spokesperson saying that uh, it would respond at the time and place of its choosing. And I will read verbatim what he did say, Daniel Hagari. This attack will have consequences, we have plans, and we will operate at the place and time we decide. Uh, French Prime Minister Michel Barnier also issued a statement saying that he was concerned about an escalation in the Middle East as Iran launched a missile attack on Israel. He says that I am speaking now. It is 7.16 p.m. at a time when the situation is worsening in the Near and Middle East with an escalation and an attack and a direct conflict that seems to be underway between Iran and Israel. Banier said in Parliament and said that uh, the situation is extremely serious. These are some of the reactions following the barrage of rockets and missiles that were fired from Iran towards Israel. That happened an hour ago, and the situation is now calm, as we're reporting. Our correspondent did or was forced to take shelter. Many people were forced to take shelter. The Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, did issue a directive to all the citizens in Israel and did indicate that uh, they should take shelter. But the IDF later on said that the missile barrages or the rocket barrages have ended and people could come out of their shelters. For all the latest news, download the Wii on app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.